Thank you, Mr. President. You know, as I was reading through this reckless spending spree that my Democratic colleagues are in such a rush to get this thing passed so that they can get it signed into law, I, I was reading it and I thought, you know, we have been through this exercise before. We have before us a bill that is too expensive to afford. It's been thrown together behind closed doors in secret perfectly branded to prey on the struggles, the fears of the American people, because after all, fearful people are easier to control. And what do we know? The Democratic Party, they are all about control and they're all about power. Now, I remembered that this isn't the first time in the Schumer Senate that the Democrat colleagues have tried to turn a crisis into an opportunity. A little over a year ago, they pulled the exact same bait and switch with a $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan. Senator Graham talked about this before. It was to bring, oh, so much prosperity. It was to solve all of your problems. Help was on the way. But it was a big government blowout in the form of $350 billion in a slush fund for blue cities, a state tax cut ban, a $60 billion tax hike, subsidized government health care, and a union pension bailout. Now, Mr. President, it is pretty clear who the Democrats were trying to rescue with that bill, and it was not hard-working American taxpayers. They got the shaft on that, and they know it. And then, of course, we considered the infrastructure package that had almost nothing to do with infrastructure, but it served as a very useful vehicle for a lot of the Green New Deal. Remember, Build Back Better, they couldn't get it across. They had to break it into parts. So you've seen parts of it in different bills. Part of it was in that infrastructure package. To Tennesseans, this was a missed opportunity because they desperately need meaningful improvements to broadband infrastructure and access to high-speed internet connections. It was a missed opportunity for all Americans seeing crime and drugs that are in their communities because of that open border and it was a missed opportunity for the Keystone XL pipeline and for support for American energy. Missed opportunities continue to be their theme. Just a few short days ago, we passed a chips and science bill. Sounds really good and constructive, but over the course of a few years, this ballooned from an emergency investment in semiconductors into an almost $300 billion gateway to industrial planning and, of course, more of the Green New Deal. My Democratic colleagues took an opportunity to unravel our dangerous relationship with the Chinese Communist Party and squandered it on a tee-up to seizing more control over the manufacturing and upstream suppliers we should be empowering. Fast forward to this month, and here we go again, sifting through a package that costs nearly a trillion dollars, yet is somehow still marketed as the Inflation Reduction Act. And I will say to my Democratic colleagues and Senator Schumer and Senator Manchin, the American people are laughing at the name of this bill. They are laughing at this. They know better than this. They can see right through what you have done. They know what's going on, and they know that your priorities do not line up with their priorities and their concerns. In reality, this bill provides no pathway to reduce our current inflation. It will, however, put pressure on the economy, raise taxes on just about everyone, kills jobs, stifles innovation, 
weaponizes the regulatory state against small businesses and private enterprise. Now, all these things have the potential to devastate the economy and make life harder for hardworking taxpayers. I want to focus on how Joe Biden and the Democrats are using regulators to overrule the will of the people and to seize more control over the country because this tactic has truly been a favorite of the Democrats. They expand the regulatory state, they issue mandates, they institute lockdowns, and there's that word again, control. They're after the control. If you need an example, look no further than the dozens of newly arrived rules and regulations that they have used to gut American energy. Radical climate activists in the environmental lobby won big when those went into effect, but everyone else lost. If you were an energy consumer, a truck driver, someone who was traveling, and workers who had their jobs just regulated out of existence. That's what the Democrats did for you. Here's another. In April, the Biden Border Patrol announced that they were holding up construction on the border wall so that they could do an environmental assessment. Now, if you recall, this is one regulatory barrier that President Trump eliminated when he took office because he understood the danger posed by our lack of border security. He was listening to the American people in the Border Patrol and people that lived there. He knew what was happening. Well, under President Biden, the open borders advocates won. But the ranchers, the border communities, small town law enforcement, they lost. The Biden administration loves to use the regulatory hammer so that they can pick winners and losers that they want. They will punish you. They will punish you. It's what they're doing with the bill that we're considering tonight, in the middle of the night, on the weekend, when people are at the lake, when people are out with their children, having fun, enjoying the summer. Here we are. It's so interesting that they have married the strategy they used last March by catering to, you guessed it, blue states, unions, and climate justice warriors. Here's just one example of one of the regulatory schemes contained in the bill that will benefit the usual Democratic allies, but wreak havoc on everyone else. Right now, manufacturers that burn fossil fuels can earn a $35 tax credit for every ton of carbon dioxide they capture and store. The bill cuts that tax credit down to $17, but there's a catch. A business can earn an $85 tax credit if they comply with labor standards that are laid out in the bill. This, of course, means that in order to survive, manufacturers and fossil fuel companies will be mandated to use union labor. Nuclear power plants will have a similar hit. If this legislation passes, they'll earn $12 more per ton in tax credits if they go to the unions instead of letting the free market determine who they hire. Now, the problem here doesn't only have to do with unions versus right-to-work policies. The problem is that the base tax credit reductions in this bill were designed to kill companies who don't want to play along with the left's green crusade and funnel money to Chuck Schumer's political allies. Hear me out. If, for example, you're running a utility in a right-to-work state and you want to keep taking advantage of tax credits, you are going to be in a very tight spot. When this bill becomes law, you will be stripped of your practical ability to hire right-to-work employees and mandated to use 
union labor instead. The kowtowing to union demands is also part of a pattern. Just a few days ago, my Democratic colleagues killed my amendment to the PACT Act that would have given toxic exposed veterans expedited access to community care. Now, why did they do that? To protect union employees in VA facilities, of course. Oh, we can't take a step like that. It might privatize VA, they seem to think. Now, instead of the health care that they deserve, these veterans are left with nothing but false hope. Access to the queue, but no access to the care. Over and over again, it never stops here in the Schumer Senate. The Democrats say one thing, they turn around, they do another thing. The bill also increases renewable tax credits, but only for projects located in the so-called environmental justice communities, wherever they are. That's a very creative way for my Democratic colleagues to tell us they're using this increase to funnel money to the cities and states they deem worthy of support. The measure is simple. You comply or you go bankrupt. Then again, you might go bankrupt if you do comply. Doing so will increase project cost and labor cost, which will in turn increase cost on everything. Everyone loses except the Democrats and their political allies. Joe Biden and the Democrats have become famous for saying one thing, doing another. They promise inflation reduction. They raise manufacturing costs. They promise economic relief, but then raise your utility costs and your grocery bills. They assure the American people time and again, big government can solve your problems. And then they use big government to absolutely beat the living stew out of private enterprise. My Democratic colleagues have touted this latest disastrous version of their Build Back Broke agenda as progressive. And I do hope the American people are figuring out what progressive means. Tax increases, massive transfers of wealth, ideological conformity backed by the full faith and credit of the United States. If you want to be broke and grovel to the government, this bill is for you. These hundreds of billions of dollars will serve a purpose, but not to reduce inflation or bring relief. Blue states, unions, radical activists will once again come out on top. Meanwhile, families working hard to make ends meet, workers, business owners, local leaders are still on the verge of losing everything. I think my Democratic colleagues know this, but they've decided that the pain and the suffering is worth it. After all, they continue to tell us, we need to be transitioning. We need to be transitioning. I don't think people like what they're going to have to transition to. When I'm home in Tennessee, they certainly don't like it, and I'll be back Monday doing meetings across the state, and I'll have to tell them that once again, the Democrats have taken advantage of their desperation and their exhaustion with what is going on. And once again, the Democrats have sold them a bill of goods that ignores our current crisis, prioritizes the pet projects the Democrats have, and the American people are once again getting the shaft. I will tell them that for the Democrats, this isn't about service. It is about control. It is about power. And to Tennesseans, Mr. President, this is all frightening. They think that this is a reckless, manipulative, dangerous abuse of power. There is very little, if anything at all, that is pro-we-the-people in this bill. I yield the floor.